Good morning and welcome. It is the 15th of December, 2021, Wednesday, and uh, welcome once again to our uh, midweek Advent reflections here at Christ Lutheran Church in Bexley, Ohio. Um, and please let us keep in our hearts and our minds, as I know we are, as we gather together in worship and, and online in worship and wherever we are, we continue to lift up in prayer all those in Kentucky who have suffered so tragically uh, through the events of the tornadoes passing through, coming through, and uh, destroying just about everything in its path. Uh, lives have been lost. Uh, lives have been changed forever. And so we pray for the Lord's grace and comfort and presence to be with all of you in, in Kentucky who are experiencing and other places in our country as well who uh, have experienced the same kind of tragedy in their life. And around the world with earthquakes and all kinds of things going on, as always, we just lift all those up uh, who are uh, who have have experienced these kinds of losses. So our, our thoughts and prayers are with all of you. So this is our third reflection in Advent. And in the midst of everything going on around us and in the midst of the coming of Christmas, just uh, 10 days away now, I was humming to myself the other day, joy to the world and, and singing it. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her king. Let every heart prepare him room. And that's where I stopped and I thought, ah, let every heart prepare him room. How does that happen? How does that happen? Let every heart prepare him room. Well, Advent, as we know, we've been talking about, is about being ready, being alert, being on the watch. And, and we, we see passages from Scripture all over the place that lifts that up. For example, for example, Matthew chapter 24, verse 44. For this reason, you be ready too, Jesus said, for the Son of Man is coming at an hour when you do not think he will. And Jesus is looking ahead to the second coming again. Therefore, be on the alert, Mark chapter 13, verse 35. For you do not know when the master of the house is coming whether in the evening, at midnight, or cock crowing, or in the morning. Luke chapter 12, be dressed in readiness and keep your lamps alight. Revelation chapter 19, verse 7, let us rejoice and be glad and give the glory to him for the marriage of the Lamb has come and his bride, that is the church, has made herself ready. So being ready, being on the alert, being on the watch. Uh, every text that we've gone over and experienced together in Advent points to that. And, and we want to ask, well, ready, alert, watchful for what? Well, for Christmas, first of all, and, and that's true. That is all true. Preparing for the coming of the Christ child and making room for the Christ child in our heart. That's all, that's all very important. And as we know, too, there's a second level to this, and that is preparing for Jesus' second coming, which will be much different than his first coming. His first coming was silent night, holy night, and a little babe in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn uh, and all of that. But Jesus' second coming is going to be a whole lot different. It's not going to be as silent. It's, it's not going to be as gentle, not even close. Preparations for his arrival will have already had to have been made, and, and that's a challenging thing. Our kids are all coming home for Christmas, and it's going to be just a joy to see them coming from all over. And um, I was looking at my man cave, and my wife was looking at it from the outside because she won't go into my man cave without a hazmat suit on. And she said, you're going to have to clean that up before the kids come home. And I said, you're right. And it's been since before last Christmas that I did any cleaning in there. And so it's pretty much a typical man cave um, for a typically messy person, uh, at least in that context. And so I looked at that and I thought to myself, okay, what do I need to do with this, with this space? Well, I need, I need to get the trash out. 
the trash out. You know, the stuff that's not good to anybody needs to be thrown away. You need to get the trash out. I need to then get rid of the stuff that I don't need. Maybe somebody else would like it. Maybe somebody else wouldn't even need it, but I don't. So I need to get rid of the stuff that I don't need. And then whatever's left, I need to straighten up. I need to straighten up. I need to organize it. You know, a place for everything and everything in its place, that kind of thing. That's what I need to do to prepare that room, to prepare that room for the coming of our family. Well, that's from a physical sense what we might do, but but when we sing, let every heart prepare him room, what do we mean by that? Spiritually, what does that look like? Spiritually, what does it look like to make room? Well, trash out. Spiritually, what does that mean? What's the trash in our lives that that we don't we don't need? It's not good for us. We're it's finished, it's through, it's of no good. How do we take that trash out in our spiritual life? We just throw it away. We turn away from it. Get rid of the stuff we don't need. We don't need to take all this stuff on our journey of faith, right? We don't need all this stuff. It weighs us down. And my, that includes the sin in our hearts and our lives. We don't need that. Get rid of it. We need to straighten up and, and get organized, know where things are. Straighten up the room, a place for everything and everything in its place. Make room for the coming of Jesus. What does that look like? How does that work? I think it begins with this idea of seeking God. Seeking God. And... and Part of seeking God is, is understanding that the other things in life might just not be quite so important. Here's some texts on, on seeking God. If we look at Matthew chapter 6, and again, if you'd like to turn to these verses as we go to them, or at least mark them down as we get to them. Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. Apologize for taking a moment to get to it here. There we go. Verse 33 of Matthew chapter 6. Jesus is talking about all the things we worry about and are anxious about. He said, so in verse 31, Do not be anxious then, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or with what shall we clothe ourselves? For all these things the Gentiles eagerly seek. For your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But seek first his kingdom. Seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. All these blessings, all the things that you need will be added to you if you seek first the kingdom, the kingdom of God. And there are plenty of other places, too, that talk about this, this seeking after God. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 29. But from there you will seek the Lord your God and you will find him if you search for him with all your heart and all your soul. Psalm 105, verse 4. Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his face continually. Luke chapter 11, verse 30, or verse 10, excuse me. For everyone who asks receives, and he who seeks finds, and to him who knocks it shall be open. Acts chapter 17, verse 27 that they should seek God if perhaps they might grope for him and find him, though he's not far from each one of them. The importance of seeking God. Now, this word seek is also related to another concept that we know, and that is in our relationship with the Lord. That is repentance. Because seeking God means that we stop seeking other things. And it means, repentance means turning towards God, making that 180-degree turn from the things of the world to the things of 
the Lord. And, and there's a big difference between that. Away from, turning away from all the things that draw us from God. So what does that, what does that look like as we do that? Well, it's, it's about certainly being ready. It's about, it's about focusing on, on God's things, the things of God, what he asks for us and calls for us, from us, calls forth from us. It's, it's, a, it's a powerful thing and, a, and sometimes a difficult thing to turn our backs on those kinds of things that tempt us to come to him. So here are a couple of passages that I share with you related to that, to repentance, to repentance. Acts chapter 3, verse 19, Repent, therefore, and return that your sins may be wiped away, in order that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. Isaiah 55, verse 7, Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts, and let him return to the Lord, and he will have compassion on him. And to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. The example of the prodigal son. We know that story. Luke chapter 15, verse 21, And the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in your sight. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. And we remember what the father did. The father welcomed him home with open arms and lavished him with gifts and put the, the ring back on his finger. Uh, and just a, a wonderful example of God's forgiveness as we turn back to God in repentance. So seeking the Lord, preparing, see how all these things connect. Advent, being on the watch, being out on the lookout. And part of what that means is to be preparing room in our hearts to receive him. That means cleaning out space, getting rid of the clutter. You know, the clutter of a desire for, for material things or the clutter of goals that are focused on money and success rather on God. And so to prepare and to be on the watch means to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Then everything else falls into place. I encourage you in these coming days, as we get closer and closer to Christmas, that you practice the discipline of folk, focusing on the things of the Lord, being in God's word, being in prayer, focusing on, on looking at your own life and taking out whatever trash needs to be taken out, giving away whatever needs to be given away, and holding on to that which is of most importance. God's love, grace, forgiveness, and, and sanctification, his mercy, all of that is of first importance in your life and in my life. So, blessings. May God bless you richly this day and every day. May God use you to be a blessing as well. I'll see you next time.